In this tutorial, we will look at the steps involved to animate a slider crank mechanism in 3D Studio Max using expression controllers. We will start with a piston that is traveling in a horizontal direction, and then we will modify it to show how we can animate a piston traveling in any direction. Let's take a look at the geometry of the slider crank mechanism and the math involved. We have three components in the system, a crank, a rod, and a piston. What we want to determine is an expression that will tell us the distance from the pivot point of the crank to the pivot point of the piston. We can do this by looking at two components. One is the distance attributed to the angle of the crank. That distance is crank times the sine of alpha, where alpha is the measurement from the vertical direction measured in a clockwise direction as shown here. It's clockwise because it's x is positive to the right, z is positive up, y is actually going into the screen, so using right hand rule, the positive direction for alpha will be in a clockwise direction as viewed from this orientation. The other component of that distance is the distance from here, the is the distance attributed to the horizontal component of the rod. That can be expressed as the square root of the hypotenuse of the triangle, in this case rod, the length of rod squared, minus the vertical component, crank times the cosine of alpha, as we see here. From this we're going to write an expression that we will use in 3D Studio Max in the expression controller that will be simply crank times the sine of alpha, crank times the sine of, since alpha is in radians, we need to use the function rad to degree to convert radians to degrees, and then we'll add to that the square root of rod squared, square root of rod squared minus crank times the cosine of alpha. Again, we must convert alpha from radians to degrees. Now that we worked out the math, we're ready to do the rigging for our for our slider crank mechanism. Here we see the three components, the crank, the rod, and the piston. Let's take a look at this in the front view and we will turn off perspective and go to our front view and bring all the components in. All right, so first thing we wanna do is take a look at the rod, which is now free to move around. So let's put that back and use our link to link the rod to the crank. The next thing we want to do is take our piston, go to the motion tab, look under position, and we're going to deal with the X position of the, of the piston, and we're going to assign to it a float expression. Here we see now that the expression says 529.6. That's the current location in X of the piston. If I were to change that to 600 and click the evaluate button, it moves the piston to a location with a value of x equals 600. So at this point, before we write in our equation, we might want to define a few variables. First of all, we want to deal with the length of the crank. So I'm going to set up a new variable, crank, and I'm going to assign that to a constant. I know that the crank length is 200. So Next thing we'd like to do is define the length of the rod. I'll create another variable called rod, and I'm going to assign that to its length, which is 550. Click OK there. Finally, we need a variable for the angle of the crank, and we're going to call that alpha. I hit create, and instead of assigning it to a constant, we're going to assign it to a controller, We'll scroll down here and look under Objects, Crank, we'll expand Crank, Transforms, and Rotation, and we know we're dealing with the Y axis of rotation. So at this point, we've assigned to the variable alpha the crank rotation controller in the Y, y rotation. So at this point, we're now ready to type in our, our expression. So that's going to be crank, 
and we want to multiply that, we can put one or more, no spaces between the crank and the multiply symbol, the asterisk, crank times the sine of alpha, but we're going to convert alpha to degrees, so we'll say rad 2 degree. Here capitalization is important. It's lowercase r, capital T, capital D. If you're not sure, we can go to the function list here, and you can see the va uh, functions available to us for expression controllers. So we have here uh, degree to rad or rad to degree, and r is lowercase. All right, so continuing on here, we want to convert the angle alpha, and uh, then we want to add to it the square root of, and at this point I like to kind of close off the end of the square root symbol, and now I can start, I have the beginning parentheses and the end parentheses, and I can write in my expression here for the square root of rod caret 2 for rod squared, and I want to subtract from it the other term, which I'm going to square, so it's going to be a, have a caret 2, and the term between those two parentheses is going to be crank times the cosine of, again, we're going to re convert radians to degrees, rad to degree, and we'll say alpha, and let's just make sure we have the correct number of parentheses, very important. Uh, extra spaces don't hurt. We'll check it out by clicking the evaluate button and it moves it to the correct location. So at this point you can see that if I rotate the crank the piston goes back and forth as you think it should but the uh, rod is not doing the correct thing. So the last thing we're going to do is select the rod, go to animation constraints and use a look at constraint and point to the rod, to, to the piston. So now we're all set. We can rotate the crank and we have our slider crank or piston actuation uh, going there. There are several features I find useful in debugging uh, the creation of these uh, expressions. One is the debug window we see here, which lists the variables I've defined, alpha, crank, and rod, as well as f, n, t, s, and t, which are ticks, seconds, frames, and normalized time. In addition to this feature, I like to open up the Edit Transform Type-In window where I can see the absolute or absolute orientation or position of an object as well as change it incrementally from its current position with the absolute and offset position. So let's select the crank and set that to zero, zero degrees. The crank is straight up. We can see the angle alpha is zero. If I change this to 90 degrees, pointing to the right in the x-axis direction, we see that the alpha is 1.5708, which is equal to pi divided by 2. Let's go ahead and uh, animate this. And what we're going to do is place the crank in the zero location like that. We'll make our time slider set to zero. We'll add a keyframe at zero for zero degrees come out to frame 100 and I want to put on auto key and I'm going to crank this forward a bit and the value I would like to set there well we have 100 frames we're rotating the crank 360 degrees or 3.6 degrees per frame so when we're all done we should be 3.6 degrees shy of uh, 360 so let's set our angle there at frame 100 to be 356.4 and we'll set that and now we can turn off our auto key hit the play button and that should look pretty good for our animation okay now what happens if this isn't positioned that is the crank is not positioned at the origin of our world at zero zero what if we move that off to some other location so what I'm going to do is select everything here and move it up and to the right. You can see that this thing kind of falls apart and doesn't behave correctly. 
So what I want to do is compensate for the fact that I've moved the crank. So what we're going to do is select the, we've got the piston selected, and we want to introduce a new variable for the X position of the uh, crank. So I'm going to create that variable, XPOS. We're going to assign it to a controller. And in this case, we'll go down to our crank, position transform, the X location. We also want to add that into our expression. So it's XPOS. And we're going to add the rest of the expression. And now we can evaluate that. So now we've compensated for the fact that we've moved it in X. I hit the play button. And you can see that the mechanism behaves correctly. In this example, the piston was moving in a direction parallel to the x-axis. If we're moving parallel to the y or z, the math will be very similar. But what do we do if the action of the piston is not parallel to one of the principal axes, that is, not parallel to x, y, or z-axis? Let's take a look at the math involved in that situation. Here we see the mechanism after it's been rotated by an angle beta about the pivot point of the crank. The horizontal component of this distance is simply the distance times the cosine of beta. The vertical component is the distance times the sine of beta. We need to con consider the change in the phase angle of the crank due to this uh, rotation. So the new crank angle will be alpha plus beta. Here are the expressions as they will appear in 3ds Max for the expression controllers. So in the x or horizontal direction, we have the x position of the crank plus the crank times the sine of alpha, where alpha is converted to degrees because alpha is in radians. We will specify beta in degrees, so we do not need to convert that. We then have the square root term due to the rod's length and again, here we will add beta to that angle of alpha. We take that whole quantity and multiply it by the cosine of beta. The vertical component is very similar, except we'll have the z position of the crank's pivot point times its term. Again, beta added to alpha, beta added to alpha. And we multiply that entire expression by the sine of beta. OK, we are back in Max with the rigging done for our x-axis piston. Let's modify it to work at an angle of 35 degrees. I've added a reference line here at 35 degrees to indicate the new line of action for the modified piston. The first thing we're going to do is select the piston, go over to the x position controller, and make the modifications to our expression here. So we have x, we're going to add the angle beta. So we'll say plus beta, and we want to do this. Beta is in degrees, so we do not need to include that in the conversion at that point. We're going to take the entire quantity, parentheses, close parentheses, and multiply it by the cosine of beta. We also have to introduce that new variable beta here, so we'll create beta. We're going to assign it to the constant of 35. So now we should be able to evaluate that expression. And it moves it to the correct location. All right. Now we'll worry about the rod in a minute. Let's go on and now concern ourselves with the Z position. So I'll go to the Z uh, transform. We're going to assign the float expression for Z. And what I might do first is come up here and grab this entire expression as a way of starting, saving me a little bit of typing. And what I'll do here is put that expression in here for our z position. Change the x here to z. And we're still going to be alpha plus beta, alpha plus beta, but the cosine is going to be changed here to the sine. We now have to define these variables. None of them have chime over, so we have to define them all. So we'll do alpha. We'll create that. We're going to assign that to the crank's uh, transform rotation about y. We then want to define the beta. 
and beta is going to be a constant and that's 35. We now need crank. Crank is the length of the crank of course and we want to define that as a, count, a constant of 200. We now have also the rod length which is the variable rod and that is a constant. We'll sign that to 550. And instead of the X position, we need the Z POS. And we'll create that. And we'll assign that to the controller, the Z position of the crank. So we're at the position right there. All right. So let's see. We'll evaluate that. And it does place it exactly on the uh, reference line. So we'll select this and we'll rotate that by an angle of minus 35 degrees since we're dealing with the y-axis here. All right, so we should be all set. We hit the play button and we now have our slider crank, crank mechanism working at an incline angle of 35 degrees. And that concludes this tutorial. Thank you very much.